Mary, were you aware of the theological ramifications? Probably not at the time. But I've been thinking a lot this past month about the mystery of the Incarnation. How incredible this is. Now my uh, typical Christmas is to read the story of Christmas, and I will do that in just a moment. But I want to consider for a moment Isaiah 9-6, which says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, on the surface, it appears that these are simply two ways of saying the same thing. But I don't think they are. A child is born like any other child is born. Aren't you glad for all the children we have around here? And the ones in the wings? A child is born like any other child is born, through a woman. Fulfilling that first prophecy in Genesis 3.15 through the seed of a woman. Now I believe there are lots of reasons why Jesus had to be born like we were. Of course our salvation depends on that. But one awesome thing about the incarnation and his relating to us as a human being is that we have someone who can sympathize with us in our struggles and in our weaknesses. Anything that you have experienced or ever will, Jesus tasted. One who has been tempted in all things, just as we are, but he's an overcomer, yet without sin. So I know we have some struggles. We have some folks who are struggling, sickness. If no one else walks through the valley of the shadow of death with you, Jesus will. Jesus is walking with us. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. What a friend we have in Jesus. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And when I think about Christmas and I think about the incarnation, I think about a relational God, not a religious God. He speaks in relationship. In fact, he speaks in a language we can all get. The language of son. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 says that in times past, God spoke through prophets and he spoke in many different ways. But in these last days, he's spoken to us in a way we can all get. He's spoken to us in Son. Hallelujah. What a personal way to speak. But secondly, and this is a, this is a revelation to me. Not only unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And here's kind of the blowing my fuse part of this. Jesus didn't become a son because of the virgin birth. He merely became a child. He is the eternal son. And God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten Son. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Jesus predated the Incarnation. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son has declared Him. Has revealed Him. Merry Christmas! He is the image of the invisible God. So when you want a visual of God, look to Jesus Christ. He is the express image. He didn't come, become that through Mary. He's always been that. He is the Son of God. And so the mystery of Christmas is summed up nicely in Philippians chapter 2. 
Although he, Jesus Christ, existed from eternity past in the form of God. He did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant. So not only did he come as a child, he came as the lowliest of the low. So I don't know matter how low you go, Jesus can relate to you. Being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That all began for us at Christmas. And this is how it happened. Maestro? The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David and the virgin's name was Mary and coming in he said to her greetings favored one the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth, has also conceived a son in her old age and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month for nothing will be impossible with God and Mary said behold the bond slave of the Lord may it be done to me according to your word and the angel departed from her. Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he has had regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. And His mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear Him. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. 
When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he'd considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who's been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and family of David. In order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child and all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them.
Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who's been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east, and we've come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what was written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. And when you found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went their way, and the star, which they'd seen in the east, went on before them until it came and stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, And they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. For a child will be born to us son will be given to us. Jesus Christ endured a a human earthly birth so that he can relate to all that we experience. Yet without sin. And as the eternal son of God, this mystery that blows my mind, he was given in our place. God the Father made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So that we might have right standing with God. Merry Christmas. The miracle of the incarnation. And everyone who follows him, trusts in him, undergoes a spiritual heavenly birth and becomes himself or herself children of God. The Son of Man, or the Son of God, became the Son of Man so that we, the sons of men, might become sons of God. We may not have frankincense and myrrh and gold to share this morning, but we can worship Him. Amen? Oh, come, let us adore Him. Jesus Christ our King. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together.
Well, just so you know, I'm praying for a revival. So this coming year, when we do this, start a song, I'm going to like require it. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. The mystery of the incarnation blows us away. That you would love us so much to send your only begotten son. You'd give us a child. You'd give us a son. And through this mystery, Lord, you relate to everything that we go through. You never leave us. You never forsake us. But thankfully, as the eternal son, you've died in our place. And our eternal future is secure in you. So, Lord, for this, we rejoice. Lord, as we have gatherings this coming week and next weekend with family and friends and perhaps some of them who don't know you, may we reflect you. And Lord, keep you the reason. You really are the reason for this season. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and the power of the Holy Spirit work in us. We make room for you in the end of our heart to share you with this world that needs your hope. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Merry Christmas.